Hello everyone, this is Harsha and I will be hosting the Expert Edge session. Today, we are diving deep into the world full of full stack observability. As digital transformation accelerates, the complexity of IT environments has skyrocketed, making it imperative for the organizations to gain visibility and control over their systems. Joining us today are the two experts in this field. Sharon, a seasoned professional from Manage Engine, brings a wealth of experience in delivering market insights on observability solutions. Divya, a principal analyst at Quad Knowledge Solutions, offers valuable insights into industry trends and best practices. Together, they will provide overview on the evolving landscape of observability, the challenges organizations face, and the solutions that are driving success. We'll explore key topics such as current state of observability, measuring the ROI, integrating the emerging technologies like AI and machine learning, and the future of observability market. Let's begin. My question to Sharon is, how are observability solutions evolving to address the increasing complexity of hybrid and multi-cloud environments? Could you point out some key trends driving this adoption of full stack observability solution? Uh, sure, Harsha. So like you've said, uh, the digital landscape is evolving. We are seeing a lot of new trends, technologies, uh, topics like AI, edge computing, IoT. We are seeing a lot of change. And for sure, the observability platforms and their capabilities are also evolving along with it. So the first trend that I think we all would have noticed is the consolidation or the unification of the observability capabilities into a platform. This is bringing organizations more visibility with less. So we do not have multiple tools. We no longer have disparate sources to understand the data or the metrics in our uh, business environments. Instead, we are having a solution that's more unified, more consolidated. And I think that's because of uh, standardizations and the standard frameworks that are being more and more available as full stack observability as the technology develop, uh, develops. The next thing I'm saying is the auto scaling capability and especially dynamic instrumentation. So as you've pointed out, the more organizations venture into cloud, the more they risk of being in the unknown of the unknowns. So to understand the dynamic nature and to deal with high cardinality data, they need an observability solution that can auto scale instead of having to wait for their engineering team to decide, okay, I think I don't have visibility that maybe I should instrument that. So this auto scaling ca capacity is bringing in more efficiency to observability platforms. And that's a trend we can all look out for. And the next thing, is uh, the more and more importance that's being given to the security side of observability. Especially bringing in more data means you have more ground to cover in the aspects of security. And with compliance, uh, organizations risk heavy regulatory, regulatory fines if the data is not being handled the proper way. So observability solutions are also making organizations more security conscious both in the ways of handling the data and in the ways of protecting their network. For example, capabilities like enhanced threat intelligence, more uh, proactive compliance management, all these capabilities are bringing in better insights and are giving organizations better understanding of the security and compliance posture. And when we talk about key trends, I think the trend that we cannot miss out is AI and ML. Especially in industry today, AI and ML has become more of a necessity than a luxury. So when I talk about AI, the first capability that comes to my mind is predictive analytics. So predictive analytics is changing the game as to how organizations handle their IT resources, especially IT resources. But it's not just that. I think we can also go a step ahead and say it's also becoming uh, or making organizations more fault tolerant. For example, uh, with predictive analytics in an IT setup, organizations cannot just understand how a particular metric is performing, 
but they can also forecast how a particular metric will perform. For example, in the cloud environment, let's say I have resources that scale automatically. So instead of waiting for the bill to come, the monthly bill to come, I can just forecast how much will I have to spend this month. And if it is something above the threshold that I'm willing to spend both in monetary terms and in the IT resource terms, then I can use my resource optimization capabilities and optimize the resources instead of you know, overburning them or over exhausting the resources. So predictive analytics, especially with capabilities like ARIMA, time series analysis and uh, failure prediction is helping organizations up their game with observability in the center. Great, that's a fair insight on the key business uh, trends. And uh, Divya, would you like to add in your perspective to this question? Uh, sure, Harsha. So I totally agree with what Sharon is saying, you know, that uh, you cannot go away with AI, ML and automation. They have now become table stakes. So what we see is that these uh, technologies are definitely impacting every facet of life and observability solutions cannot uh, be escaping that. So um, uh, what we see here uh, in terms of observability solutions is these technologies are definitely uh, increasing the ability or enhancing the ability of solutions so that they can provide more actionable insight, uh, improve operational efficiencies and drive better decision making. Like if uh, uh, we talk about uh, AI driven auto anomaly detection. So uh, right from reducing false positives uh, to enabling proactive issue resolution. So everything is being taken care of through AI because uh, the solutions are utilizing ML algorithms to identify any abnormal pattern in system behavior. Uh, also, um, you know, we see that automated root cause analysis is becoming one of the important capabilities where artificial intelligence is uh, helping streamline the process of identifying the root cause for any incidents and also accelerating troubleshooting. Um, uh, we cannot ignore uh, the fact that the automation of routine tasks right from data collection to aggregation to visualization, you know, everything is getting automated because of AI. And uh, what it is doing is that it is uh, essentially uh, freeing human resources so that they can focus on um, other high value activities. Uh, we also see that uh, visualization is one area where um, uh, AI is making significant inroads and uh, uh, because there is so much data and the data is, you know, uh, uh, you know, organized in such a way that that has to be more informative, that has to be interactive. So all these uh, visualization capabilities are essentially being powered by AI. So uh, these are a couple of areas where uh, we see, um, uh, you know, uh, observability solutions enhancing the power of AI. So I, th I think I have to agree more with uh, the best perspective of root cause analysis being more enhanced. So previously, I know at least I feel like root cause analysis has always been a bit tricky because there are a lot of variables and it would be very difficult for the engineering team to identify what went wrong and where. So with observability's adoption of AI for root cause analysis, root cause analysis has become more context aware. So now organizations can understand, okay, this has caused this to happen to this. And especially like they were pointed out, data aggregation from disparate sources has also made the pattern analysis uh, capability much more efficient. And with you know different techniques evolving, for example, open telemetries, uh, context propagation, where we can understand how the particular stream of data is and what are the variables that have changed the flow of a particular network pattern, it makes it more easier for organizations to uh, understand the root cause. So that also means that it brings down the mean time to detect and the mean time to resolve. So these are some uh, interesting developments in the field of observability. Great. Yeah, so I do, I, I do agree with both of you that, you know, AI and ML has also been in demand for a lot of capabilities and a lot of organizations have a scope of using AI and ML as a use case. Uh, 
especially in uh, observability and other visualizations market as well. Um, so now let's jump into the spendings and uh, measuring the ROI. Uh, Sharon, uh, uh, could you tell us how the organizations measure the return on investment of their observability in initiatives? Uh, what are the key metrics, uh, key business metrics that are most impacted by the observability solutions? So I think how you measure the ROI of your observability implementation differs from industry to industry, if not organization to organization. If you are in the e-commerce space, then well, your website availability is something that you need to monitor more and it's something where observability can help you more and it's something where you can measure the return of investment more. But if you are somewhere in the banking sector, you would have to give more importance to the uptime. You would have to give more importance to the transactions between your systems. So it differs from organization to organization. But with that being said, a more general place to start can be quantifiable metrics like downtime. Because I think a lot of organizations would have a more historical record of how much downtime has cost them. And this can help them assess the financial impact of downtime post your observability implementation. So tools like SLAs and SLOs can further enhance your calculation of ROI with observability. But if you're going on the more efficiency side or on the performance side, uh, then the metrics like mean time to detection or mean time to resolution can help you translate the ROI of observability implementation. Uh, to be more specific, if your incident management time or if your incident uh, detection time has come down drastically, then it also means that the amount of time your resources, your engineering team spend on such incidents will also come down. So this at the end of the day means that you are spending less on incidents when compared to your uh, incident management spending before your observability implementation. So that's one thing there. But your ROI calculation do not always have to be quantifiable. They can also be qualitative ROIs. For example, a, an increased or an enhanced user experience with your website. If your user experience is good, then the transaction with your website will also be good. And if your business uh, depends on a website transactions, well, it means an increased transaction is also going to translate into increased profits. So that's there. And if your research experience is good, then your net promoter score is good. So there is good brand loyalty, brand visibility. And there are a lot of metrics that come into the ROI calculation. So a good place to start is to correlate which metric matches the most with your profits or with whatever is the business metric that you want more enhancements on. So find that uh, metric, be it downtime or your net promoter score or your availability, find that metric, correlate with your ROI, uh, with your business impact, and then do your ROI calculation. I think this way organizations will have a better visibility of how their observability implementation is working. No, definitely, Sharon, I totally agree with you. You know, it uh, uh, every time cannot be quantified, but qualitative assessments very important. So uh, if we talk about, you know, how uh, observability solutions are better able to predict the resource utilization and also automatically adjust capacity so that they can meet a demand. So this is also one of the areas where uh, observability solutions are optimizing resource utilization, which essentially will lead to you know better ROI for the company. I think we heard it from the experts that how important the RO to measure ROI is important for the product managers and the business users as well. Um, so that was a, a different perspective on how UX is UX plays an important role in uh, uh, helping fetch a good amount of ROI from the from implementing the observability solutions. Um, my next question would be about the integration with the emerging technologies. And uh, Divya, uh, how are observability solutions integrated with technologies like AI, machine learning, and automation? Uh, could you point out some potential benefits and challenges of these integrations? So uh, definitely, Harsha, uh, we have, uh, you know, discussed uh, about these benefits. So right from, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, 
providing actionable insights, improving efficiency and decision making. So, uh, you know, whether it be in terms of reducing false positives or streamlining, uh, you know, uh, the root cause analysis, prioritizing alerts or automating routine tasks and uh, interactive informative visualization. So on every area, we see that, uh, you know, uh, AI, ML, automation playing a big role and uh, essentially helping observability solutions. Great. So, uh, Sharon, would you like to add your perspective on this to talk about yeah. how in integration of emerging tech works? I think, like they were pointed out, the integration of AI will play a big role. And I think we, we're also seeing observability becoming more versatile because uh, it's not limited to a particular set of devices or a particular network design. It's also being extended to the edge. It's also being more advancedly ex extended to the IoT category of devices. I think this caters to a larger networking need. And uh, we're also seeing a lot more developments in the observability techniques used itself. Because previously, uh, I feel like most observability products stuck to a particular technique or a method when it comes to how their capabilities work. But now we are seeing products use an ensemble of techniques like uh, Bayesian networks, isolation forest, and these techniques are making sure that the capabilities that they offer are more enhanced, more refined, and more targeted to a particular need that an organization wants from their observability implementation. So I feel, yeah, as Divya said, AI and a lot of other capabilities, they are enhancing the observability platforms and their offerings. And this is happening in a more rapid phase, which is a really exciting part to see. Great. Um, so let's go to the next question and talk about the future outlook of the observability market. Um, uh, this question is to Divya first. And how will the role of observability evolve as organizations continue their digital transformation journeys? Uh, this could be perhaps in the next two or three years. Um, could you throw in some perspectives on the big moves by the big giants in the industry? Sure. So, uh, Harsha, what we see that uh, uh, pretty much every organization is uh, uh, moving towards a digital transformation journey. And uh, with that, uh, we see that the role of observability solutions will significantly become more and more important. Now, uh, based on our analysis of trends and also insights that we capture while interacting with various observability vendors, what we see that is observability solutions are going to become more intelligent in the future. They will be more and more integrated and become very essential for maintaining whether you call security, uh, high performance uh, network environments and also uh, enable the digital transformation goals. So um, if I have to, you know, uh, uh, talk about one major takeaway, I see that holistic observability is definitely going to be one of the things. So the observability solutions will extend beyond traditional monitoring and uh, it will encompass a more holistic view of systems, applications and services. Uh, it will include logs, matrices, traces and also user experience data. Uh, hence, organizations will invest in more and more unified observability platforms so that they can consolidate data from various sources and also provide a more comprehensive understanding of the entire ecosystem. Now, uh, if I have to talk about um, uh, some of the key features which uh, will further evolve the observability landscape, I think it is definitely going to be AI-powered automation. I know uh, both me and Sharon have talked about it a lot, but I still feel, uh, you know, uh, uh, automating anomaly detection, uh, whether we call dynamic setting of threshold levels, root cause identification. So all those things are going to be more and more powered by AI. Uh, there will be enhanced uh, security and the zero trust principles are definitely going to be, you know, um, laying the foundation. Also, uh, more, uh, you know, enablement of cloud and hyperscale integration so that observability tools um, adapt. Uh, they focus more on uh, dynamic environments, uh, more focus on container orchestration, serverless computing. Uh, I also see that um, proactive problem solving will be one of the areas which will be very important because we see that organizations 
are moving uh, from a more reactive uh, incident response to a proactive prevention uh, kind of a paradigm. So this will be enabled definitely by predictive analytics. Um, last but not the least would be, I think, uh, uh, more uh, user-friendly interfaces uh, we will see because uh, uh, I feel that the dashboards, alerts, visualizations, everything will be designed uh, keeping uh, the human cognition in mind and observability tools will certainly prioritize more usability and user experience. Great. Sharon, would you like to add your perspective on this? Uh, I, th I think uh, you have pretty much covered it all. And if mm -hmm. I am to add anything more to it, uh, like she said, the user friendliness can be more trickier as the technology becomes more complex. Uh, I think this is where we are seeing some lateral fields improving or helping in this. For example, natural language processing is something that's making the user uh, more accustomed to the consoles because I think they can now directly interact with the console in natural languages. We are seeing AI co-pilots making it more easier when it comes to scripting or configuring a particular observability setup so yeah, I think user friendliness uh, is something that I am very much excited about because it's evolving in a way we haven't seen it evolve in last few years. So I think yeah, that's something I'm excited about. Great. So I think this is what we have planned for today, and we are at a we are at the end of the session. Uh, thank you for such uh, insights and your expertise on full stack observability was invaluable. Uh, we'll be back with more interesting topics. Stay tuned.